Okay, guys, let's see how we can refactor one old PHP project with the help of AI. So here we are in Cursor, and this is our prompt. Before launching any queries to the API of the preferred model, the most important thing to do is to set up rules. In Cursor, we can go to Chat Settings, and then we go and click on Rules. Under User Rules, I've added the following. So the first one is prefer simple solutions. Then I have only make requested changes that are well understood and related to the request. This is important because if you leave just the prompt, the robot tries to add new code and also a new functionality that you actually don't need. And this is a big no for just refactoring of a project. The next one is think about what other methods and areas of code that might be affected by code changes. This is in order to fully comprehend the links or the connections between the files and their logical structure while being in thinking mode. The next one is always look for existing code to iterate instead of creating new one. Again, if you leave it without it, it can create a new structure and you have code duplication because in the new structure you have a new code and the old one will be still existing, which is related to the next one, which is avoid code duplication, which means checking for other areas of the code base that might already have similar code and functionality. Then we have don't touch the code that is unrelated to the task. Focus on the code areas that are relevant to the task. Keep the code base clean and organized. And I think one of the most important one is generate code for specific defined transformations. And I'm having some examples here. And this is to ask the robot not to perform project-wide automated changes because you basically enter in a loop until you stop the robot. And this will give you an opportunity to be asked for each step whether to continue on or stop with the refactoring. The rules to the chatbot when using Copilot can be chosen if you create a file called code-style.md and then you can open the workspace settings and set this configuration. So GitHub a Copilot chat code generation instructions and specify the file pointing towards your instructions file. So this will also give some rules to the Copilot when generating its responses. So after you've set the rules, the next most important thing is to set up a Git repository. It might be local or you can create just a new branch. The point is to have all the changes here so you can browse them and to see the differences between what it has been before and now and also to be able to revert or discard to the previous version of the code if you don't like the changes. So this is crucial step in the development. So once you have set up all those things, the next most important thing is to provide the proper context. So for example, here in Cursor, you can add the context with the add sign and be careful which directories and which files you've been adding. So here I've added just the old source directory, but for example here, where I have already done certain refactorings. I don't want the robot to run and to go over my old files, but just over the new structure. So be very careful what kind of files you're providing and directories for the chatbot to work on. Actually, there are two more rules to follow when working with chatbots. The first one is to keep in mind whether we want to use the agent mode where the model will iterate over your code and fix errors, or we just want to ask questions. I prefer to use another editor for this. And for example, here I've installed Gemini Code Assist exactly for such tasks. So to have just for debugging issues, another prompt with another engine that will just fix certain errors while the main refactoring and the logic will go, for example, here using Claude 3.5 Sonnet model, which leads to the second important uh, thing that is the limitations of the chatbot. They have a certain buffer or context window that whenever you overflow it, they might get confused and return you same answers. So be careful for the changes that you're making and and whenever you're making them, try to test them to see if they are working. The moment uh, you see repeated answers, I advise you just to create a new chat and uh, start fresh 
All right, so after this introduction, let's start with the refactoring. So we have provided the proper context, the old files, and I'll use the following prompt, suggest and create PSR4 namespace structure, move, update, and refactor the existing files based on the new structure. The most important thing here is to start small. So we have chosen agent mode called 3.7 sonnet. And when we click on send, it will read the different files in our structure. It will try to understand how they are connected and it will start refactoring our code. It has a certain plan. We can follow each of the lines if you want to be more granular. The interesting part here of using cursor is that it will make everything very fast. It sends the environment way better than Copilot. So very quickly, you will have your project reworked. In the end, you have a schematic of your new structure and explanations of the actions that Rod has done. The point here is that not everything is migrated and you can continue manually to do so. And now it's time to go ahead and test the code. If it works, you can also ask questions. For example, here we have some errors and again to run the agent to fix them. For example, in this project, because I'm using containers, I'm mapping the source directory from here to the container var www.html. So when I'm pointing to the error, it will give me the errors inside of the container. So I'm specifying the location for Claude to be able to orient itself into the logic and the structure of the application. And this helps to fix the error via the, those uh, paths. So when we are happy with the refactoring, we can again go to our uh, source control and create here another commit. And from then we can continue updating the code with another prompt. Now, if in the process we receive errors, we can use directly the agent mode of cursor to be able to fix them. So for example, we can have the following prompt. I'm receiving the following warnings. Could you try to fix them? And we paste our warnings and we add the whole project directory as a context. Why this is more interesting than using directly Gemini? Because with the agent mode, it will iterate towards the errors. It will try to fix them and it fixes multiple files. If somehow something is not working correctly, then for a specific error, of course you can use Gemini. You just need to paste the error and uh, see and debug further. So in such cases, it's good to know the language and what's going on with the code. Once again, for more granular help, you can use the chat mode with different models. I've placed the whole project inside of Docker container and here I'm installing Composer inside of the container so I can use it. If you would like to use linters, one way is uh, to enter inside of the running container with a shell and afterwards to run commands inside or directly, for example, to run static analysis tool directly from within the container. So let's enter in the container and from here we can type composer update, which will install certain packages. We can also install Psalm here. So here we are inside of our HTML directory inside of the container and we can run Psalm from here. So type vendor bin Psalm. It will scan the files and propose solutions and you can see the errors. You can click on those files and reach them. You can also start dev containers around your application. So they'll create a Docker environment for it. And this will allow you to develop directly inside of the container. Another extension that you can use for static analysis is uh, PHP Stan. And for this, you need to have it installed again from Composer and configure it. So basic configuration is one PHP Stan.neon file with such parameters here. Then it will read the configuration and will start static analysis. The point is that if you have big project, it will take you a lot of time. So be careful when using those together with extensions under VS Code, especially inside of containers. I think it's best to run them 
directly from terminal and to see the output and then to try to correct the code. All right, let's suppose that everything has uh, gone smoothly and we would like to improve even further the code. So with the prompt refactor this PHP code to improve readability and maintainability, consider breaking down long functions using modern PHP syntax adhering to PSR 12 coding standards. This is again a huge task for AI and you can run it. Keep in mind that it will use a lot of your credits if you are on a free plan. So think of your budget before running agent mode. You will be asked multiple times, continue to iterate whether you're satisfied with the results. And it's interesting because you can use all these refactorings to somehow learn different ways of modernizing your application. You can choose to keep or revert the files. And here's a trick. If you are happy with the results, please commit them. Otherwise, if you stop the request, it will undo all the tasks so far and delete all the newly created files and this action can put your code in a very unstable state so be careful when using this option as a whole i'm quite satisfied when using those tools as you can see here we have a new structure with controllers database models and all the other features provided maybe the most difficult part uh, for this project was that i was constantly forgetting to make snapshots of the working stages and the chatbot was rewriting a lot of the code so i needed to undo a lot of the changes all right guys i hope this information will be of help if you would like to upgrade your projects and if you find it useful please subscribe to the channel for more thank you